So, uh, my name's Ian, I'm one of the medicine clinicians here at Davies and as you know we've got quite a large site and a large practice and to use that site we split the practice into three different areas so to allow the clinic to, to work. So we've got the kennels, the theatre area and then we've got the diagnostics area. Now the diagnostics area is where all the large equipment is for doing some specialised tests that are normally done under general anaesthesia. And as you can imagine, there's lots of different clinicians wanting to use these facilities, so it takes quite a lot of coordination for that to happen. So this is the, the, the part, first part of the diagnostics area, which is, I know, just simply a desk, but it's an important part of the diagnostics area in that um, this is where all the coordination of all the different tests and all procedures are going to happen. So as you can see, here's Lillian just working out the schedule for the rest of the day um, so we can make sure that all the patients get what they need from a diagnostics point of view as efficiently as possible. Now the diagnostics area is split into a big U shape, so there's one corridor up here and one down here and we're just going to take you down both. So this is the first corridor, so um, I'll just talk you through some of the rooms. So as you can see there's a very long corridor and the first room to the left or your right is the MRI room. So patients will be moved into there whilst they're under general anaesthesia. So as we move along the corridor, the next room that we're going to talk about is the anaesthesia induction room. So this is just through here. So as I said, a lot of the patients that have procedures in the diagnostics area are under general anaesthesia. So this room has two doors, one to the left and one to the right, so that patients can be anaesthetised and then moved into whichever corridor and whichever room they need. So why we have a separate room is that we can keep this area calm so that the patients are relaxed and they can have a smooth transition to, an, uh, to a deep plane of anaesthesia before they then move into their appropriate area. So this door here is the CT and MRI control room. So there's nobody in there at the moment, but this is a room where all the computer software for both the MRI, which is on the right, and the CT scanner on the left is controlled by our radiology department. So as we move farther back the corridor, um, on the left we've got the door to the CT scanner. Now there's a patient in there at the moment having a scan, so I can't show you inside, but it's a similar kind of shape and, 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 uh, to the MRI room that you've seen. Moving farther back, this room here uh, is the uh, imaging reporting room. So all the advanced imaging uh, pictures that are taken on the MRI scanner and the CT scanner are sent to this room for our radiology specialists to interpret. So if we just open up here, just to have a look, typically these rooms are nice and dark and calm. And here you can see Monica, she's um, just reviewing a case at the moment. So this is an MRI scan of a dog's neck. So as you can see the images move straight over to our interpretation area and as you can see there's a very quick turnaround in interpretation of those images and that patient that you've just seen can then be moved straight to our theatre area to have surgery to correct the problem. So the, the final room in this corridor is the uh, X-ray 2. X-ray 2 we have a variety of different types of equipment. We've got an X-ray machine uh, for taking x-rays of bones and chests. We have a fluoroscopy unit. So the fluoroscopy unit is a bit of kit that allows us to perform swallowing studies. So if a dog or a cat has got a problem you know, uh, with regurgitation or swallowing of food, we can give them uh, food with barium in it and follow the barium along the food pipe to see where the problem is. And then finally, we've got a bit of a dental equipment, and then this bit of kit here is an EMG machine. So um, EMGs are used to, uh, to assess whether there's muscle disease. So now we're back at the bottom of the U in the main uh, organisational area of the diagnostics. So now we're just going to go up the other part of the U shape. So we'll just walk past the nurse supervisor's office. And as you can see, Lillian's just making some adjustments to the cases that are coming in. So as we move up this corridor, the first room we come to here on the right is a, a day ward. Day ward is an area where a lot of the, the short stay patients come, so patients will arrive in the morning, they'll come in, have a procedure and go home the same day, so it's a short term ward. Um, and we can also allow our patients that have anaesthesia in, this, in the diagnostics area recover over in, in, in this area as well. We move up the corridor. Um, 
First door on the left is a room that we've already been into and that's the anaesthesia induction room. So hopefully as you can see it sits in the middle of the U. So a patient that is anaesthetised in this room can either go out into the MRI area and CT area or be anaesthetised here and move into this part of the diagnostic suite. So this room opposite the anaesthesia induction room is the endoscopy suite. So this is the endoscopy room. Um, endoscopy is essentially a term for putting cameras into small spaces using natural orifices um, is the proper medical term. So that's putting cameras down your throat, um, up the urethra, into the nose to access areas that aren't as easy to see. Um, and those cameras understandably vary in size, shape and flexibility and all of those procedures are done in, in this room. Opposite the endoscopy room is our cardiology um, suite. So uh, this is an area where all of our heart cases come for echocardiography, which is a heart scan using an ultrasound machine. As we move farther down the corridor, um, we come to another ultrasound room. So this is our general ultrasound uh, uh, procedures room. So using similar equipment to the cardiologists, only this time the ultrasound is performed on like, the abdomen or other parts of the body. Um, unfortunately, there's a patient, well, there is a patient that's sedated in there at the moment, so we can't go in there to show you. Um, at the end of the corridor is our isolation room. So this is where all the patients that have um, potentially infectious uh, diseases that might be spread to other patients are kept in isolation away from the general um, uh, kennels area. And then the final part of the diagnostics corridor isn't a diagnostics room, it's our cat ward. The reason why we, we have it all the way over here is that it's farther away from the main kennel block, so it's not as noisy where there's lot, potentially lots of barking dogs, so it can be nice and quiet for the cats. So we'll just go in here to finish off the tour. 